power. Passive is okay, but it was too much in that direction. Yeah, and their transgressions are forgotten. Everyone on the analyst desk going for <laughs> right there. Team WE did have that fast game. I'm really curious to see what type of draft phase we get here. I wonder if they're going back to protecting expect and the pig ban because that's what they did against SKT. When they play teams with a similar style where not too much goes to the top side and they both teams like to play bot heavy, then usually they, they protect expect a little bit and set up for a good matchup, but it doesn't seem like they're actually doing that this game. Yeah, and what's interesting as well, if I look over at Team WE, is they played so well around Mystic and Ben throughout the regular season and hardly ever played through 957. Yet here, when they played through 957, he goes off on Clef, they win. When they abandon him, he's 100% of his team's death 25 minutes into the game. This is actually super interesting. Very fast pick and ban here. Double jungles ban out. I wonder if they go for first pick Graves, but then they may break the tradition that is first pick Lulu. Well, we'll have to see what WE's final ban is here. Kind of interesting so far. Elise Lee Sin, Nami on the G2 side. WE Ivan expected. Cannon and one more to come. This is a very important game for these two teams as well. It's important to remember. These two teams are relatively close in skill based on what we've seen already. So a win here kind of puts you up above a team that's close to you. And there's Karma. There's Lulu. Yeah, because of the Karma ban, they have to pick Lulu and they lose the Graves, and they likely end up playing the Kha'Zix into Graves matchup then. Yeah, you have to be so adaptive with that final ban if you're Team W, because you're not coming into this one and trying to whiteboard out the pick ban phase and say, oh yeah, I think G2's gonna ban uh, two random junglers and Nami. No, uh, but because of that reaction. The other option though, if they don't ban any of the three is, yeah, G2 can get the mid laner Graves, but then WE could have had Karma and Lulu. I actually would have preferred that, or getting one of the two shielders as well as Graves. So I actually don't agree with that Karma ban since WE is the type of team that has such a good Karma mid play style. Uh, but that's what they've gone and done, and they do jungle AD with their first two picks. They lock in that Ash. Yeah, Ash is one of the stronger picks here for Mystics. Venha plays a champion five, but his arrows were not kind of hitting their marks. So I don't think they mind too much that it's stolen away here. We'll see what happens on the G2 side. Strong start for WB on the drop, but they did have to give away a Lulu for the trouble. And I think, again, so a lot of... I think Phase 1 champions getting banned out is kind of the interesting thing here. Yeah, and there's actually Kog'Maw, yeah, locked in for G2. It has to be Kog'Maw plus jungle here. Otherwise, Trick is going to get pitched even more. Or they must have a niche pick somewhere that they do not expect their opposition. This Rumble could technically be a flex, though. Yeah, G2 definitely switching it up here. The reason I like the Kog'Maw in this situation is it is a hyper carry. We're expecting this game to go fairly late. And also, look at the supports that are banned. Yeah, He's not laning against a Nami or a Karma in the other side of the matchup, so the Kog can actually do pretty well in lane with the Lulu, I think. Yeah, and also, if you're not playing against a really prominent hard carry top laner, you know, 957 isn't rated as high in the aggression department as, for example, Kuni, then you can get the Shen through the laning phase as well, and you can center everything again around Sven and it's always a joy to watch uh, G2 Esports or just any team that Sven is on play protect Sven comps. And I like this a lot. I like the champ for that reason. They're saying, Trick, we trust you. Even if you get a few more bans thrown at you, we're confident you can play. Maybe even a surprise pick here. But again, making sure they play to their strength, but the bans that keep coming. Kled wants a pick for WE. They knew they had to take it now, but now the jungle bans start. There's Rengar and Zyra on the opposite side for G2. Yeah, G2 is laning support dominance in the bottom lane, maybe even the Malzahar. Uh, they get rid of next. This has to be Kha'Zix right here on the other side. Yeah, because that gets rid of... We've, es we've essentially moved down. That's five jungle bands as well as a jungle pick. So you're down to your seventh jungler uh, on your tier list. Maybe Trick has something like Warwick? He has hand, played Rumble something? and one game of Warwick as well, I do believe. Um, he can definitely play that. Yeah. Well, there's the Thresh ban actually instead of something like the Malzahar. Let's we'll see if WE maybe want to take some sort of support here. Perhaps could flex this Lulu as well, so WE could lose another support, but it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, Malzar goes down in value because you're already going to build a QSS for the Ash anyways, and you have the defensive support. So in that sense, Thresh gives you more variance in, in kind of gameplay, flash play, you know, mad life performances on hook, you know, faker smurfs on support. That's what you want to avoid with the Thresh. Give him a standard pick that is at least predictable. <laughs> <laughs> Nunu! Oh, they only locked it in! It's Nunu! I thought they were joking! Well, and there's the Lulu, there's LeBlanc. Draft done for G2. Yeah, and they have the LeBlanc as a split push threat, so they're not all about the center fold of the Kog'Maw, but I love the Nunu coming in this love situation. Love Mr. Nunu. All right, go ahead, Jai. Why do you like Nunu? He's good. <laughs> but really, uh, this is the patch with the, with changes, the changes to yes, his yes. passive. So if you're able to get enough auto attacks and you do get essentially a rank two alt at level six, but more so he is a safe jungler who can control a lot of the game. 
Um, it's a little tricky against Graves because Graves clears so so quickly, but as far as just being able to protect the Kog'Maw, it's perfect. Yeah, super fascinating, this new Nuna pick. We also have to look at the uh, the reaction here, though, into this LeBlanc. Cassidy has seen a couple uh, quality of life uh, change that thing, as well as small buffs on the ultimate, I believe it was. Um, so he's definitely slowly getting buffed up every patch until yeah. he has broken status again. It was a cooldown reduction on his Force Pulse, and also his W now follows people past Flash if he's already started yeah. the auto attack animation. Or even a LeBlanc going back from a distortion or something, it will hit. So I think Kassadin's a very strong pick in, into LeBlanc. We were so distracted by the Nunu, we kind of missed out on that nice counter pick down the stretch because WE very much trying to split up and flank to get onto the Kog'Maw, whereas you two want to keep this map small. But look at the range in deep fights. This is a very short range composition, I feel, on, on, on so a lot of these carries here. Cassidy and Kled, if Sven can escape the initial burst of engage, he can orb walk his way out of these fights with the protection and single-handedly kite his way out towards victory. However, there is so much hard engage too. Kled going in from one side, Cassidy from the other side, maybe an Ash Arrow to slow or flash Malzar. If Sven dies, a lot of the damage goes down with him. Yeah, just a lot of potential here in WE. They are going to have to play I think a bit more aggressive in this situation. We talk about 20% of their games where Condi just goes off and the team can follow. They're going to need to dig back into that 20% if they're going to try and take on what is a terrifying scaling comp. Yeah, and, and I loved this draft phase because there was so much adaptation required, throwing out the support bands early. And I honestly feel like G2 got exactly what they wanted out of this. It feels like it because they, they still get the shielding support, whether or not that was the plan beforehand. All the jungler bands fall through, but they still get something that is additive towards their team composition if it is almost never played. Yeah, as a total unbiased European, however, I'm a little <laughs> scared for the combination of Nunu Shen in the past that has shown a lot of tankiness, but too little forward pressure or damage. And the fact that LeBlanc can foul off a little bit. If it's like an Oriana that scales a little bit better as a double damage threat, or even a Syndra that has just more innate blow-up potential, LeBlanc is tricky to play in these kind of uh, hyper-carry comps. Yeah, and I like this because we have such a difference between the team compositions, because WE's comp is actually not without scaling. Kassadin and Kled can scale pretty well, and the flank threat of those two is massive. So both teams have very clear strategies. Double TP on both sides to try and match the split pushing in this game. Well, everyone's out into the rift here for this game. Really interesting stuff to start it off already, and we're barely even into it. Sven and Minty, though, having a dance in the bottom lane. I actually hate that skin, yeah. personally. <laughs> Dislike but Sven it. has doing it to tilt the opponent, perhaps. Yeah, definitely mental warfare uh, with that super noise skin. We need to watch <laughs> this bottom lane, though, because this lane isn't as easy. Uh, Kog'Maw is very centered around the cadence of the W. If it's up, you win. If it's down, you get butchered. So you really need to step forward and backwards well in this laning phase. And Ash can always poke you when you're on your way to trade as well. well it looks like Trick. Very curious to see how Nunu is going to look at Jungle Route as well. Nice little ward from WE is actually going to see that buff. Condi and Ben also starting. Oh, Trick maybe predictably is on the blue buff. Yeah, one unfortunate thing about playing Nunu jungle is he doesn't start very well on the Raptors, where a lot of other junglers can start. Graves does start well on the Raptors, but when you have a Malzahar, you want to take advantage of the Voidling pull. Condi killers that so fast, and since he did have the ward, he can actually do to Nunu what Nunu would like to do to opponents. Yeah, but look at it, uh, both teams seem to be ready for the reaction. Now the vertical jungle yeah, most likely. Because the ward's been placed already. I'm not sure if uh, Trick actually saw that ward being placed, if he knew that his opponents have the knowledge uh, of his starting location. Oh, damage already being down here, level one, and Mystic's pretty low on health, Minty chugging potions for himself as well, but see if the aggression continues. Level two, gonna be on the way after these three melees, I believe, but here's Condi actually bottom side. He's coming in for a cheeky gank here. G2 bot lane trying to respect it. Uh-oh, damage is gonna be pretty big here. Quick draw in, Sven instantly burns the heal out of respect. Yeah, and this is actually not the best planning here, because G2, what they were doing is they were training health early, to be in the race for level two. They were still able to get fast to level two. The problem is, as I pointed out, we have vertical jungling going on. You cannot race for level two in this scenario because Graves can always show up if they let you push. Yeah, and the thing is now with the Hawkshot flying up towards Trick, I don't think he has time to clear this red buff. You can see Condi skipping all the way towards him as they fight in the bot lane. Mystic low as well, but they're gonna turn it back in onto Mithy. Ban autoing out. And so again, much, more potions being chugged. So much easier to kill these Vodlings right now, though. They're getting butchered patch and patch and patch. Yes. My, no, doesn't get a Condi. Oh, he smoked two health early right there. So close for Trick to get that steal. And now his counter jungling is for not. That was so close by Condi. Yeah. Anunu getting three buffed. That is not the 
early game result that you want now. However, he can adapt by picking up mostly Scuttle Crabs just really quick along the way. Just get a body from all of experience and gold here, but definitely great start for Condi. Well, expect getting pushed in in the meantime here in top lane. You can have to go on CS pretty comfortably, but what just one again? It was two health, you said. Yeah. Two health was right. Yeah, that's, that's just extremely close right there. Yeah, especially because Condi did have red buffs, so it was ticking down, and you're, you're trying to time your smite with the auto attack because both junglers are going to be smiting on the same threshold right there. Just insanely close. And now push on the bottom side. Maybe that aggressive trading has cost you two's duo a little here. Actually, Tensi has done as Vance trying to catch up with his huge wave under the tower, but just constant harass from the 2v2. That's the story for the side lane. He's getting pushed in and trying to stay on even CS. Expect is doing it much better than the bottom lane. However, they had an early visit from any graves, and that can really throw a spanner into works. Luckily, Cogwall does not need even CS, because on level 6, that initial trade, when you have picks on you, you get a couple W autos and an R off, that is poked to half HP on any champion. So pushing into this mid lane now. So, let's see what he can get done here. Teleports were expended early, so they'll have some early laning items. And Trick's actually down the bottom side, but he's gonna get spotted. Good ward. No Holy. buffs on him. They're pushed in pretty hard. They also don't have heal on Sven, so they gotta, they gotta back up. Connie's got red here as well. In fact, he's also got flash. He just looks to take one down. First blood is on the horizon. Connie flashes for it. And there it is. And we're again at an international tournament where G2 have a plan a late game idea of what they want to do, but things go horribly wrong in the early game, and they have shown in the past that they do not adapt well to losing these turrets early game at international tournaments. He's got sums, isn't gonna have to use them, it takes a boatload of damage from the three members of Waterloo, and that turret is low, that actually might die, where's the wave? It's not quite there in time. Mithy essentially just tanked for the turret right there. He was trying to distract Team WE so his turret wouldn't fall. He does hold it for now, and that prevents the absolute disaster, but it's still quite bad for G2. Just again, like Trick knows enemy jungle is coming, they're trying to hide under the turret, but Sven just completely out of resources. He got punished too often, had to use W on the creeps, obviously couldn't use it as a trading tool, and eventually it broke. And Trick, too late, escaping. Yeah, would have needed to flash much earlier than that. That may have prevented Condi from going in for the flash if it wouldn't have secured the kill, but just doesn't quite gauge the Graves' damage right. The problem when your Nunu is under so much pressure is that he can't do any drive-bys in the mid lane. This matchup, the only matchup that is kind of seesawing in the other direction is Cassavan versus LeBlanc, but you need a jungle visit to tiptoe it just a little bit too much, you know, so it falls over the edge and Trick hasn't had the chance to visit mid at all. Yeah, and so much of that goes down to the miss smite on red buff. If that hasn't happened, Trick has the red buff, probably level four. Condi wouldn't. Trick can maybe smack him out of that brush, no problem, but it was those little things that do have snowball effects, and it's all about now how G2 can recover. Well, he certainly looked at Water Elite here and said they will have to play a little uncharacteristic of themselves and get that aggression going. Condi, as always, has been the flag bearer for that early play here, but game certainly not out of reach. Almost a thousand gold up for Water Elite, which is nice, but certainly not over. And World Elite right now, they have to be careful of this four man one bot from uh, G2 Esports. Team WE, of course, no longer uh, the Forsaken name, because they're looking to get back amongst the elite in the world. Yes. But they're not there quite yet, so we call up Team WE. But yes, they're looking to uh, combat that play from G2, because G2, they want to make a four-man roam bot with the Shen, the Nunu. LeBlanc uses the push, and it's honestly just a five-man party in the bot lane. Yeah, that is the hope, and that's also what can hopefully for them keep Team WE at bay. But this very much looks like the type of WE composition we saw in Game 1 versus Flash Wolves, not the more passive everyone range composition yeah. we got to see against TSM, so W trying to play these multiple different styles, and Condi on the forefront right now, again invading Nunu, sees the control ward. Gonna get caught maybe, but the bottom line's still pushing so nicely that I don't know if Trick can do too much. Yeah, the question is caught by what? Because they have push in that bottom lane, and he can just now contest this red buff with a lot of fearlessness. He has the support of his Malzahar, most likely. I don't know if Kassin's gonna get there quick enough as Ben. He's gonna move himself out of the way. Tarek goes down, and Mystic says to take it, and now Sven can all dissolve it. Maybe a little too much, but Sanjana said said Mystic cut into the enemy team. Condi not there in time. Sven gets a kill. The WE not done yet. Here's 957, but Condi already too low. Goes down as well. And now 957's got a flash. Does get polymorphed over the wall, but now Perk's also looking for a pickoff. He's actually 
Gonna meet Cassidy in here, so he'll back away, but G2, great collapse there. And that fight was a mess overall because it is all about the red buff, but they end up getting kind of caught down bottom, and G2 was way quicker to the party. And this is why, if you're playing Kogma, put at least one point in E. So many Kogma players try to mid-max and avoid that ability at all costs, but it actually was the catalyst that snowballed G2 forward. When you want to play Kogma lanes, you call an E trade first. You say you go on that E, the guy slows down, and then you go all in, and now we have the Shen ulti coming in. Trick was doing a great job, he even consumes for help on the top side of the play there. And then Jen, he doesn't panic flash. He flashes just as expected, lands, gets out, survives, but is continuously doing damage. Kobe was talking about it yesterday. Uptime in team fights, always contributing to the damage in the fights. Yeah, and the angles that WE chose in that fight were very poor because they had the stronger members, so if they all focused, then they would have been able to win, but they did not. For them, though, they still have a tremendous amount of map pressure. Already taking the bot turret, and they're so quick to move up top. This is a really nice translation, actually, from Team WE, and they will be able to get this after stacking up a very big wave. So gold in their pockets, despite losing the last team fight, G2 having to recover, means WE now up two turrets and 2,000 gold. And Sven's arc to becoming a superhero is being set. <laughs> I mean, he is yet he has yet to die in this tournament. His damage run is insane. And if they win, the only route is through him right now. He, and he has to pull them from behind. So not the ideal way to play, but he has been performing. And if there is a guy that you want to be able to pull you back, it would be Sven on Cog. Yeah, he might just evolve into OG Deals and single handling carries the game. <laughs> that guy Perks. was pretty good. Good flash from Perks. Misses the arrow there from Mystic. And that's a little angle. Doesn't quite clip expect either. Good enough. That's the only case where I can advocate flashing in the wall is OK. Uh, by Perks. Yeah, jump on a rope, pulls we'll expect back in, but Ken doesn't look particularly bothered by this. Team out up for the Kled, uh, Shane Vest, Barmy, Cinder, so almost up with the Sunfire Cape, but FF7 not taking over the game just yet. I'm quite perplexed here by the very early QSS by Perks in the cast of the matchup. I feel like he's so scared of blocking fights. So he he's basically from Alzahar. Uh, yeah, from from Alzahar in fights. Great because he's a long. Because uh, he's <laughs> I think he might just want to be like a nuisance going in and out, but being scared of being silenced and then CC. Yeah, his threat is non-existent with the QSS. I mean, surprise! People do like building the QSS to avoid Malzahar, but I feel like Ben has uh, bigger fish to fry against a team that bigger dogs includes the Kog'Maw. <laughs> puppy too. here, poor little puppies, Ben. Uh, and interestingly, like, Mystic is up in the top lane because they're trying to keep Sven away from the farm, but that will let this Ocean Drake most likely go over. Well, they'll take it if they can get it. Looks like the WE not in the vicinity, so that will be over to Trick. That is one thing we haven't seen Nunu in a while, don't forget. Pretty good at taking down big monsters. This is something WE do a lot, though. Put their AD carry in a side lane, and then they lose the rest of the map. Teams need to capitalize on it, though, and punish it very hard. Mystic is getting so much free farm, but... The Free farming on a side lane that's 80 carry when you have Cassidy in mid generally uses the entire bounce out of the map. Just does want his farm and is a top performer for the team, so I can kind of see why, but adaptation's never really been WE's thing. They just kind of play their style and do play it well to their credit. Still up in goal, which is good, but no pressure really in that mid lane perk, providing quite a lot of wave clear. First Drake went down, so there's nothing to do there for about five minutes or so. I mean, if G2 are looking for a lull in the game, it's actually a very good time for them to just farm up. Yeah, exactly, because you look at the ward control, and Team WE actually doesn't have very strong ward control into the territory of G2, and that's kind of where they need it. WE has taken down both side lane turrets. Perks is sitting in the mid lane, so there's very few places for the Kog'Ma to farm. A 74 CS Kog at 12 minutes, not exactly the rate at which you would like to farm for Sven, who's one of the highest CS per minute players in the world. So, at this point, WE need to continue to pressure those side lanes, get the wards, and then alt in with Kled and Kastin to keep Sven down. The stick actually coming down as well. This is a nice little setup actually for WE, but G2, we'll see if they play the requisite amount of safety looks like WE aren't going to overcommit for it. Mystic not going to stay in fog of war for a potential arrow, but at least they've moved their AD carry towards this mid lane. G2 already know this. They've moved him, there, Cogmore, there for the safe farm, and WE kind of doing the right thing on the map. Yeah, but Sven will always have to yield the push because he can't move up to challenge that wave. Because if he does, he's very prone to Ash arrows or Flash Malzor ultis, and he has yet to finish a QSS of his own. 
you're definitely going to lose the mid lane priority, which means then W can move in left or right, put the yeah. vision, go to the silence, eventually rotate towards the tier 2 turret, or set up like a dive in the mid lane. Yeah, I'm kind of waiting for WE to set up a dive, because that's like the net natural thing. Looking at the damage threats on G2, they are mostly non-existent. You got a QSS LeBlanc and a Kog'Maw who's level 7 without a blade right now. So if WE can get the pressure in the side lanes, and then five-man dives Ven in the mid lane, that's how they break this game open. Yeah, the alternative could be Rotating for a side lane turret, but they're confiscated so well around diving, they may just have to be careful for the Shen, though. That is one thing WE will have to be careful for. Actually, side lane action they're gonna go with here. Perks in trouble. 1v3. Does have his QSS, so yeah. David saves Got him. The QSS. His trick can help him out. Silence is down to and in. That trick, absolute zero. Just to zone them out of the way. Everyone protects him, and Perks is okay. Yeah, but they lose top lane. So this is 1v1 one one being executed by WE here, and so much pressure from 9 for 7 He's gonna start chunking that turret. Yeah, that's a lot of overall pressure lost, especially because Mystic is single-handedly holding two people in that mid lane. So, 957 able to get a lot of hits on him. Yep, does back out though. It's like he spotted Mythy moving through the jungle or just has an awareness that they've backed off. They're probably up here about now. Kind of using some of that internal time. Oh, a free CS for Zven. Almost. Sweep it. Oh, okay. I thought it was in range. Mythy and doesn't have one. It's a disaster. Feng have to continue playing back here for a little while longer. And Mystic does have that completed play. The other issue kind of his man is that even if he has gold, he's not really got a chance to back. And even in terms of pressure, it's actually quite good to just place a ward in somebody's vision sometimes. Mostly you want to hide wards, but when you're playing stuff like Ash and Malzar, you just want to remind them, hey, I see you at all times. You're gonna, even if you're peeking around a corner, it basically means that Sven now has to hide under the turret. Which means WE can always push those ways faster and, and deeper in, and they can rotate for longer uh, amounts of time. Yeah, and we keep talking about all the things WE can do, but uh, there's very little they are doing right now. It's 1.8 thousand gold after taking down both side lanes and having a double TP composition with Kled and Kassin. Where's the charge from Kled? It's been six levels since he's had it, and they haven't pulled off any of these plays. WE can be known in the LPL as the team that turns on at 35 minutes and is the Elder Drake team. But if you do that with a 2,000 gold lead against this G2 composition, you're going to lose. So Team WE has to make something happen. Seems like they might be setting up for some side lane pressure. But again, despite all the good things they have in place, it's how they execute upon that that we'll have to look for. 140, Infernal Drake will be spawning. So that might be another place where WE can say, all right, let's just force a 5v5 because that is something they know as well. But if, again, if this game is in this pattern, G2, two thumbs up. Yeah, good subtlety here from Perks here as, as the G2 bot lane is basing and basically leaving mid exposed. He moves to mid, clears the wave out, goes back, and they're just stalling all over. She at level 11. Pretty strong right now with the Rod of Ages ticking up, but they're going to have to go back. Probably an item to buy plus some wards to refill. Mobility boots actually there for the Mauser so maybe that will get it a bit more active. I mean, I feel like I haven't seen a single Mauser all, all game, and when you've got a cog, really farming a lane. Feels like WB have the tools, but just aren't quite using them yet. Yeah, and to be fair, even though G2 does have this Protect the Cog composition, the way they've done the rest of their draft is with 1-3-1 one, one split pushers. So Shen, not easy for Kled to get the push on, and same with LeBlanc, especially one that has a QSS at this stage in the game. So that is one of their tools for trying to stall this out. It's not as simple as just uh, making one play. It's essentially picking a lock. They need to make the, the right moves three or four times in a row for that lock to open. It could be burning the teleports on the side lanes, burning the channel, and then returning for another dive right there. But it's so meticulously slow, and G2, this is their style that they like. Open maps, side lanes, not too much hard engage and just manipulating minion waves. It's what they've been training for the majority of the season in Europe as well. And I really like how they've moved Zven to the mid lane. It's the most secure spot on the map. They can shrink it as much as possible. And as long as Expect keeps this push on 957, the Kled all isn't going to be coming into Diamond. And it's also one of the reasons we were talking in champs, like, you know, we see LeBlanc here scary. No Syndra, no Ori, because you think, why don't an Orianna shield to protect the Kog'Maw? Well, Orianna doesn't play well in side lanes. LeBlanc does it much better, and that is actually uh, Helping them right now. Good arrow. Actually, Charlie's gonna come in as well. Stand United is tricked. He's the first part of the old. The absolute zero against Shadow. Pretty big amount of damage coming, but not quite enough. Spent low on the back line. Blast goes there, gets him out of the way. But Shea moving forward with the Rift Walkers. Mithy is low. Expect actually traveled. No, it is Mithy. That's called this mouse. Condi takes out Trick. Finally, as W, we get themselves a kill. 
And that's a play they're all waiting for. Yeah, and G2 actually broke from their pattern. I don't know why they walked towards the Rift Herald, but as soon as they left the safety of that mid lane oasis, they were just completely collapsed on by WE. Way too much solo queue. I thought it was a new Herald <laughs> on the patch. No, that's honestly the only plausible explanation you could muster because they were just so fine scaling up. It's not even close to Baron spawn, so there's no reason to contest that vision three minutes ahead of time. I think they just felt too comfortable in this kind of status quo that W created, but major blunder here. And Sven could have easily died in that fight. Sia could have left over and found him across the wall, but he went for the team fight. Incredibly perplexing, and Sven now not in his turret, opening up towards the Kled side of the map. Instantly, 957 comes in with the Kled ultimate, and Ben finds the person he wanted to with his ultimate, so it doesn't matter if the Perks has a QSS. He was off of the bottom lane, teleports in really late, but everyone on G2 just tried to run as far as possible. Yeah, right there, if Shia takes him left, um, he finds Sven takes him down. So the zero deaths still up for Sven. It'll be much harder in the future, because a bit more gold on WE and then Infernal. Yep, Infernal's nice there. WE do pick it up during that replay. We're both now gonna go over to Shia as well. Things just kind of still Building up for G2. Perk still needs that first major damage out of Gumblade not done just yet with that early QSS. Blade Ninja Turbite is done for Sven, so that's a good look for him. But Perk, little caught, does have his QSS, distorts back out of the way. Now looking for this turret here. Good three man by G2 trying to break up in the map a little more. Yeah, they're losing the individual uh, matchups, I think, right now, and that's why they're trying to just go for turret trades. Because if you put this Cassid in, look at the items. Negatron Merc that's Cassid into a block lane. He's gonna win that one run super hard and eventually leave that lane and join the mid lane party. So G2 <laughs> trying to change Sorry. it up. Oh, back to armor looking good there. Agma struggled. Let's uh, finally take it. Here they come, teleport mid. Aggressive TP, Condi actually on the turret. And G, uh, well, WE, sorry, he's gonna look to take it down. Arrow actually going as well, charge. Up but not used. Arrow missed is probably the reason why, but it's a good collapse and they're still going. Yeah, it's very difficult for G2 to stop them right now. They don't necessarily have the wave clear options. Good amount of damage done, but second turret does hold for now. Rift Herald says bye bye. And W2 again, back to the side lanes. Yeah, W finally exploiting the, the weaknesses of this very one dimensional uh, G2 composition. It's all catered around Sven, but if they attack him early, hit his economy, scale him up slower, then obviously they're in the, uh, control of the map. And there's a big TS lead actually for Mystic that's opened up. I kind of started in the laning phase, but again, Sven being forced to play so safe and far back, even in the safe lane in mid. I mean, the Mystic's actually up almost 40 CS here in the matchup. Two items done. Yep, Sven's still working on that second one, but the strength from W is just growing a little bit faster. He needs two items and then he needs the QSS, and then he can really like, position more forward in fights. Mithy's also going for redemption, not Mikael's, because obviously you get the double value. Mikael's could be good against Ash Arrow, but if you already get the QSS for Malzar ulti, Bowser's never going to use it anyway, so you can save it for the arrow that way. Yeah, I mean, we know the eventuality of the items that you 2 want to get. Yeah. Uh, Mikhail's, Redemption, possibly Ardent Sensor, but that's a lot, and it's kind of all on Mithy. The Nunu build very much is the Frozen Heart because of the three physical damage auto attackers that WE has, so he's obviously going to go with that next, so a little bit later of a turn on for the supportive items. Yeah, maybe Frozen Heart into a Negatron Cloak or, or some a little bit of MR right there, and then you just pivot, and I think you go for a nice Vow. Yeah, I think Knights Vow very early uh, on Trick or Expect even. I mean, we saw yesterday they're very willing to go two Knights Vows. That's a very strong item uh, in the game right now. Yeah. No AP top laner, so no banner to kind of save your map that way. So obviously Kled is just going to tear through that one. So they'll likely be luck into the lore this game. But look at this, Team WE biding their time and pushing the tempo. They know that G2 still doesn't have a team fighting presence, so they're actually threatening Baron at 21 minutes into the game now, which I think is quite smart. Well, that ward's annoying. Gotta do it well, though. Yep, double pink ward's required, right, Crapper? If you only have two wards, they're definitely not in the right location right there. Definitely you not. never should do it in the... You can do it in the pit if you have wards to spare, but a single sweep in the pit usually means that you're fine, but they're still launching. Arrow lands on to Sven, uh -oh. down as well. And there's the old the old Sven gonna get wild group, but the damage is a little too much. Nine, five, seven, five, just four for the kill. Trick's gonna go down for the second, and now Perk diving into the back line, trying to get an assassination, but GA gonna shut that all down. Perks will get away, but WE get two crucial kills. And that's actually really impressive, because very few teams pull the trigger from that distance. So Sven was waiting for somebody to get close and walk in front of him, but WE fire from so far away, and that is actually the Kled coming through in that pattern. Yeah, everyone gets the move speed. G2 thinking about harassing this Baron, but that would be a big mistake. Well, WE instead is gonna get the Baron. She a Rift walks forward to try and get him off. Scar gonna tank it. 
That's not the right adaptation. I think a really good point on the move speed right there, because that it just means that people close that gap so much faster. You feel safe yeah. in that distance. Every game you play versus an Ash, arrow me anytime. I'll be out before you're here. But then in one or two seconds, yeah. everybody's there. Moving up to clear the ward, and Trick does take the charge from Kled, but it's not nearly enough. It's still rank one wild growth, a level 10 Kog'Maw. Heal expended, but not even close. Fen realizes he can't even be that close to this WE team. One more piece to come in much earlier as well to just you know, get the Kled off. Sven, 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 Oh, Sven, get denied! Works. Buy right. time, just buying time. Yep. Chilling out. Watch us the... Emo having some fun, just thoughts back in, and I think Shia is going to maybe try and chase him down. Good sounds, Ben flashes over. Thunder lost Brox, he wanted the kill. Ben don't mess around. He ain't got time for that. He has the Baron buff, he wants to push. It's like, stop these shenanigans. I want a macro. Yeah, Perks is doing his best to try and keep the minion wave out. Actually, when the Baron went down, Perks used to teleport to get to that bot lane. Definitely, uh, probably shouldn't have died right there. Clear the minions, get out of there, and try and defend his five, because that's exactly all G2 has left. WE extended this lead, picked up an early 20-minute Baron, really trying to punish now. Should be able to do a lot of damage here. No Lich Bane only for Shea went Abyssal second instead, but Kled with the team at plus the Black Cleaver will be on the sideline turrets, and of course Baron makes this almost trivial. Yeah, and Kog'Maw can't actually kill these minions very quickly. Uh, even with his W1, they have so much resistance to magic damage there that uh, Wave Clear is really be difficult for G2. I mean, he doesn't even have a Runes yet, so it's extra hard right now. But Shea gonna take down that T2 turret, make it five for WE. 957 working on the last one there in top lane. They have such a massive lead right now. Yeah, and this is going to be a big mental blow for the G2 Esports lineup. They felt so good after yesterday, progressing throughout the day. You know, great long game versus SKT. They felt good about the win, but we're seeing kind of say the same thing we saw yesterday. Early game deficits that shouldn't really happen. Uh, composition being punished, very much so. If WE can actually push the dagger through right now, they can easily take this game. Exactly, and how deep does the dagger have to go before G2 falls over? Because 8,000 gold, it's a pretty deep cut yeah. right now for G2. Sven does have his hurricane, but it might not even be about that at this point, because the amount of damage they can uh, push through, and Mystic even being at a full threat, he's a full Phantom Dancer ahead of Kog'Maw, so yeah, you throw the Lulu and the and the blood boil onto Sven, and that makes him as strong as Mystic. Then you got everyone else to worry yeah, about. Yeah, everybody else is the problem. Because in terms of shot calling and target selection, it doesn't take a genius to figure out who you got to hit on G2 Esports lineup. Because Perks, he's, he's a novelty. With this Q Assess Gunblade LeBlanc, he's not doing much. Jumping in, doing some damage. G2 will need to be very precise in their engage. They don't have much time. And if you want to put a value on it, Mystic is about 2,500 gold ahead as Ren right now. So a completed item as we can see in the inventory. It looks like a catch on the GA. Maybe cast it really hard to pin down, but a good talk from Expect could make it happen. Ripbook again, Absolute Zero going to get canceled as there's Ven. He's going to move away and Shea still got shifts. Getting it himself out, almost gets over the wall. Flush snowball from Trick as the base is just getting destroyed. <laughs> Why are you chasing a cast it in? GA finally gets him. taken down, but the spell trip's to keep him alive even longer. Turret down in top lane. It's just, just the base getting pushed in. And now Shia just wants to cancel back. Top in hit goes down. G2. Oh, so oh, desperate. No. There's the touch in. Sven again gets taken. There's the mother ult. He's absolutely dead to Condi. So much physical damage in the top half of the map. And it's just fallen to pieces for G2. You got to be able to avoid that Ash Arrow even in that situation. They're chasing the cast in because they figured they'd lose the inhibitor anyway and are trying to get a kill. So WE make the most of it right there. Shea lasts all the entire game pretty much. And then Sven does end up falling anyway. Now, but even though it makes sense, it just goes down in such a comedic way. Oh my goodness. That is just Who do we chase? The guy with the two-second cooldown dash. Yeah, Rift walks galore, and then they got him now. I wonder if this is gonna play far. Oh, nine, five, seven. Yeah, in the way, in the way you lose this though, in the way that play goes down, I wonder if like kind of the backlash and the memes that are gonna come down from this are actually gonna hurt you to esports. Yeah, Sven flashing backwards from an ash arrow in a straight line. That's not the Sven you saw yesterday. Yes, the team is falling apart around him, but you have to be able to flash away from that ash arrow and not get hit. Now gonna take red, actually has a bolt strike the Raptors, and he'll start that camp as well. That's some power farming. Adelie Ash here is still about 40 CS ahead. Now with a hex streaker just to make sure the gunblade void stuff QSS the one can't do anything else. Yeah, it makes total sense here. WE playing it right. They have the right item builds. W uh, and 957 are mutually helping each other with these black cleavers. Shea survived the matchup, invested early in MR. 
Then went Runner Ages, he went equal to Perks, was super happy when he saw Perks pick up the QSS. And then the side lane pressure that this matchup decided, they just snowballed W forward. Yeah, the massive Baron power play there, 6,700 gold. Mystic and Perks doing battle, Mystic in a loop with the shield, there's a lockdown, QSS, not gonna save him from the fourth thing, arrow hits on the trick as well. That's gonna be yet another pin down there as water leads. Oh, he's going to take down Trick through the wild growth, and now Xie Rip walks in, just zoning the rest of G2 out. There's the charge in, almost kills Mithy in an instant, and then it's straight on his vent. Pulled back by 957, exhausted down, damage is there, then fights it up, but there's the Connie corner wants it. for Connie. It's Expecto, he's the tankiest member left. Ward Lee gonna walk the game in behalf of You can see lining up for the fountain. Ah, uh, they're, they're gonna potentially kill the Nexus turrets first, but they have 20 more seconds to secure that penna. What matters more to WE? The Nexus or the Penta? Nexus open, Condi. Only expect moves his way forward.